<laughs> What's up, guys? That was me. That was so funny. <laughs> What's up guys? My name's Brandon. This is Annalise. It's a girl. This is my first YouTube video on my channel. Are you pumped and excited for this? Yeah, pretty excited. Pretty excited? What are we, what are we gonna do, man? We're doing a story time today about co-workers. From? From hell. Hell. Uh, Brandon and I, we have a, a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot of experience with our yeah. co-workers are just, you know, Let's cancel them. You know, they are just not good to be with. So, ready? Let's get yeah. into it. Okay, guys, so let's give you some background about why we're going to tell you this coworker from Hell story. So, we used to work at an amusement park, and every year, an amusement park from across America, they have like kind of a Halloween type of thing. So, we worked at that. Um, you know, like Not Scary Farm, right? Yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, just that we can't disclose anything, or Brandon can't disclose anything since he still works at the company. Um, I no longer work at the company, so it's really whatever, but just for safety and make sure that young Brandon still has his job <laughs> at the end of the day, we're not going to disclose names or the company or anything because it's a great or company. Or anyone involved. Exactly. Because there are other people we'll talk about. And that's the main thing is that we want to protect names, protect safety, because this is a rather heavy topic mm -hmm. <laughs> and it gets pretty crazy mm -hmm. nuts. So let's start off with what our job was in a sense. So basically what we did, mm -hmm. we were characters and we would, people would walk through our maze and we would scare them. Yeah, so that we were basically actors in a mm -hmm. sense. We were, you know, when you go to any type of haunted maze, we're the people that would scare you. Uh, I know, it's so weird to think about like, we <laughs> aren't like scary. <laughs> I know. We were commented throughout the season for how good we did. And that's a whole nother nice. video. That's <laughs> a whole nother. <laughs> but there was one person in particular, we're gonna call him Peter. Peter, we're gonna Peter. call him Peter. And when we first started the season, he was pretty normal. He was a bubbly guy. He was just very friendly, very talkative. Everyone got to know him pretty well. And the thing is, like, he was that type of dude that, like, you would always want to hang out with, you know? Mm -hmm. He was, like, the definition of cool guy, you know? He had the looks, and he had, like, he was a very nice-looking guy. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he was just, like, he was so educated, and he got he had multiple degrees, and... Well, he did? Yeah, no, oh, he, he went to I didn't university. even know this. He his master's. Wow. Yeah. And he was just like a really just well-rounded guy, or so we thought. Like the first time I ever met him, he was reading a newspaper. <laughs> like straight up. A newspaper? A newspaper. He's like, oh god, I don't remember check. the first time I met Peter. He was, yeah, we don't want to. But he was just like this normal guy, like your typical guy, but then we started getting red flags. A lot of red flags. A lot. <laughs> I mean, a lot. So like throughout the season, we've all kind of all bonded. And you have that initial period of time when you meet someone new where you're like, you know, trying to make your best impression, impression, but then after a while you become really comfortable with them and you start showing your true colors mm -hmm. and his colors were, uh... Very red. Just bad. Just terrible. Terrible, terrible colors. Yeah, so our but, group, yeah. as a group, we decided that we were going to go to dinner one night at a restaurant and when we went to the restaurant, there were some of us there, like six or seven of us, and then when Peter arrived, he came with a child, like a baby. Yeah, and he he um, was driving two other two other of our coworkers, and one of them was a minor. Um, around I don't, I don't want to disclose the age, but let's just say they're a minor. Uh, Old enough to work at yeah. And place. Peter, he's like he was what thirty one. Yeah. Over thirty. Peter was over thirty. The other girl was around twenty seven. Um, I'm twenty one. Brandon's also a minor. Almost 17. I'm almost 17. And uh, so that's also going to come into play later on. Um, but in our maze, it was a mix of ages. Mm -hmm. The oldest was like 65. And laughing Sally. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the youngest was <laughs> Brandon. So when they went to, when they came to dinner, so he was driving a minor, others. an older person, himself and the baby. And we were already inside chilling. We were at a table, that. just like drinking, and then he comes with his baby mm -hmm. in like a stroller. In a stroller, and then we were like, "Oh, who's like? Is this your baby?" He's like, "Yeah." And then 
He said that the older one. No, it wasn't her. It was the minor. The minor. He said the minor. The minor was the is mom. Is the mom. And the thing is, I worked with that minor. We're gonna call her like Katie. Katie. So I worked with Katie. I was in the same room as her, and like she never once disclosed to me that she was ever having a child. Or like, already had one. You know, never, never. Never. She's not the type to do that. So that entire <laughs> night, I, I was so triggered. Cause like you were that, talking like. Yeah. By ourselves, just Dude, I like was... flipping out because we couldn't believe it. And like, but they they kept going like, yeah, this is real. And no, everyone did not believe it. Everyone was like, are you kidding me? Like, and we all were like, she's a minor. Yeah. That means when this baby was born, she's like 15, a year or something 16. younger. Yeah. And like he's like, oh yeah, we lied about our ages. I'm like, <laughs> so what? And like. In, in the maze, there was a group of sane people, I like to say, who had the <laughs> right mindset. Um, and a lot of us were like, should we tell someone? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is low-key, like, child. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that happened, and the next day, Katie, like, told me, and only me, not Brandon yet, that, hey, it's fake, it was a lie, we made it up to joke around. And it was like... Why would a grown man with a kid joke around? Choke. And that was kind of the first really big red flag. So after that, it just escalated. It just got worse. In so in the maze, really, um, there was like kind of clicks in a sense. Mm -hmm. So there was like I know I had like my female friends, and you had like your guy friends. I did. Yeah. Well, I thought I was ever. I was more. Everywhere. I would say I was more everywhere because I, I like. I'm a people person. I'm everywhere. Yeah. So I was. With, I was good with. At least in that that group, I was good with the minors because there was a group of minors who just stuck with themselves most of the time. So mm -hmm. I was good with them. I was good with some of the older people, the supervisors, everyone. Just. Just everyone, everyone really. Yeah. And uh, but in in like kind of the older group, there was like me and two other. It was me and two other girls, and we kind of like really, really, really click, like not clickly, but we're just really close and we still are. And what happened is that we began to realize that what? Peter <laughs> was making his way around town <laughs> with a mm -hmm. lot of people. So uh, I'm not going to disclose another co worker, but another co worker of mine, really still an awesome person. We still don't like talking stuff. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Yeah, um, basically. We were talking to her and we said, oh yeah, do not go with Peter. Like Peter's he's a bad weird. person. He get, you know, at this point, Peter was giving us so many pervy and creepy vibes. Like there was that mm -hmm. time where after dinner, for about two hours, he like, we talked, remember me and Peter? Mm -hmm. For two hours after dinner about like, his sex appades and like, <laughs> him There was one time when, porn so we have, we had changing rooms. And there was one night when he didn't go into a change room, he just stripped off everything and he was shirtless in front of Ugh. everybody. And he knows that he like, you know. And our supervisors were like, like, get in a freaking change room. And he was like, whatever. It's only one time. And it was just so many times where he just started disclosing to people about like him wanting to be into porn and him going to Las Vegas and going to brothels and mm -hmm. hooking up with girls and doing like body like Things. you know not that but like you would have parties where like parties where you would have to be a size like zero to size four to go into this party mm -hmm. and it would be a sex party and it was just really creepy because like you're in this in this maze that we're in it's minors there's so many minors there's a lot you don't talk about this stuff so there's a lot of reflex so i remember going back to what i was saying so i told um my coworker going back I said, do not hang out with Peter, whatever you do. Do not hang out like with him. Like she said, him. I think you remember, like, don't even associate with him. Because it was at that point where we're like, okay, you just, like, took a minor to the beach and, like, groped her and, like, yeah. lashed in front of her. That happened, too. Yeah, and, like, now, like, <laughs> no, no. And so she's like, oh. And she, you know, disclosed, like, things already happened. And we were like, oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, shit. And, and the sad thing is that she thought they were exclusive with each other, but in reality, mm -hmm. no. That wasn't it. Because <laughs> he what, has a fiance. Yep, that that happened. Yeah. And that was the tipping point. 
making this grip. <laughs> we <laughs> then expose Peter to everyone. The moment we found out he had a fiance, dude, everyone it was, knew. Everyone knew. It was wildfire. His <laughs> makeup artist knew. Our supervisors knew. Everyone knew that he had a, no, a fiance. He had a child. You know, and I remember um, another coworker of ours. What was her name? Wifey. We'll call her wifey. 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 She when she found out that um, Peter had a kid, she would go and like watch Peter talk to like girls, and then wifey would go and run over there and be like, you know, he has a kid, right? <laughs> and then all the girls she would talk to would be like, oh my god, really? And he'd be like, thanks a lot, wifey. Like <laughs> obviously upset that his plan yeah. was canceled. Like we don't, his what, his fiance doesn't know. Yeah, that's the thing. That he so, does this. So, like I'm sure she has some idea, because yeah. one of like if we want to go back to that story when we went to the dinner thing and he faked mm -hmm. it with that minor. Um, the other person he was driving, well the entire time knew that he had a fiance. Yeah, and she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything because I feel like she was in an awkward position where she needed rides from him. And if she yeah. like expose him, of then course, she wouldn't get anything. Yeah, so I totally understand her situation, mm -hmm. but it was just oh god, <laughs> it was so gross when we found that out. Like I remember, like jaw dropped, couldn't breathe. Once we, once everyone found out that he had, you know, a fiance and a kid, he literally just stopped. Talking. He no, he disappeared. Remember, he disappeared for the last two weeks. Didn't he go to Vegas? No. Vegas, no, but then he got sick from the SF smoke. Oh yeah, he went to San Francisco and he got sick from the smoke. So if you didn't know, NorCal fires. Had NorCal fires and stuff. He got sick, quote unquote. Did he ever go? Did he ever say he was in the hospital? Yeah, he yeah, said. Yeah, he went to the like, freaking like, hospital. That's a load of baloney, whatever to say. Call BS. Smoke fires my ass. And so after we exposed him, he stopped talking to all of us. He only talked to. I'm talking two people few people and that's it. He went from coming and talking to everyone of a group of like 30 people to two people. Yeah. And at the end of a season, like we had a big party, right? And he shows up to the party with his fiance. You could bring a person who didn't work to the party. Yeah. And he brought his fiance. And we're just like, are you serious? serious. <laughs> like is every girl he hooked up with was at this party. And you can just see how like upset they were and how disgusted they were about him. And they were just like, you know, they were like, are you serious? Yeah, and they me? stayed by themselves the entire time. They barely associated with anyone. They, um, I remember one of our friends, they say same, right? So one of our uh, really close friends, Julian, hey, what up, Julian? Julian! We miss you, come back! New Orleans? New Orleans, we're gonna visit him. Yeah, we have to. So, Julian, really cool dude. Like when I, I don't remember. So Julian went up to um Peter and his fiance. And again, like I said prior, Peter would tell everyone about his brothel experiences. I remember like Julian saying like, oh yeah, I actually mentioned a brothel or something as a joke and I started laughing. And apparently like Peter's fiance was like <laughs> and like just like looked at Peter like Boy, <laughs> and I think that just showed like, oh my gosh. And when he remember when he walked in with his fiance, we were like eating food, and I like almost spat out my food because yeah. he found out that her the fiance is pregnant again. Yeah. She oh choked. my god. And like we were like at a table and they were like far away. But you could tell you that could she tell. was pregnant. It wasn't like fat because pregnancy is on your lower abdomen. Above yeah, but abdomen. she was like, she had a baby. Yeah, it was triggering. Insanity. And that basically ends it really all. Um, it ended with us discovering months later during the next season, mm -hmm. kind of the winter season for where we work that he did some really bad things with some minors and he not only again more red flags but he like in the end did sexually harass a few minors and and it sucked because we learned about this after the season so we couldn't do anything that's the issue. even like we told our supervisors but they couldn't do anything because it happened they learned about this afterwards 
the so nothing could be yeah, done. The only good thing is is that during winter season, we did warn people that were still working with him that for some miraculous reason, he got a higher paying job as a character. Was, Go figure. And that's a whole nother, we're not gonna touch that because yeah, that's, that's a an lot entire more. different story. We'd be here for an hour. Honestly. Um, it basically ended with us discovering a lot of bad things about him and I don't think he will ever be part of the company again. And yeah. that's a good thing. Because what happened with the miners at the end, what we learned, they're gonna take into account if he ever tries to go there again. And what he did during the winter season, they're also gonna take account of. So he never, yeah. ever gets hired again. Um, I think the main, like... Like what you should take out of this is... is you know, if you sense someone being weird and creepy, you probably should tell. I think that's my biggest regret yeah. is that we saw all the weird signs and we kept brushing it off because I, because when he would do weird stuff to me, I'd be like, oh, he's just, I can't like tell a supervisor because like everyone loves him. It's like. Yeah, and like whenever I would talk, like it was a little awkward, like it's awkward to talk to him. He's just like that awkward person after start mm -hmm. what happened, but like. I didn't want to like say that he was an awkward person because that's not enough. You know, it's kind of really hard because if you think like this one person gets along with everyone and then you go to your supervisor and complain about him. And the supervisor is you know. fine with them. They're like, no, they wouldn't ever do that. Exactly. And then if you go to Peter, he's like, no. Oh, I would never, whatever, do, that. I'll never do that. But what we learn after is that nobody liked him. Everyone yeah. thought he was creepy and our supervisors even went to HR a few times yeah. and spoke about Peter. So that just shows, you know, if someone's creepy and you get a bad vibes, most likely you're gonna have bad vibes. You gotta tell somebody. Tell somebody, Mike. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Well thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Go visit her channel. Even though she talked more on this video than I did. Not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're I, the one with all the information spinning it out. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm good at story time. Yeah, you should go see her story time on her channel. We're doing one about expectations of working in a haunted... The same place. Like, kind of more like the ghosty aspect, you know, our Yeah, if you experience. like spooky things, go on her channel. Thanks. <laughs> I'll probably be back again. Yeah. Mukbang. <laughs> Catch you next time, y'all. Bye! Bye.